Hey well sharers, this is Terry Black and I am here to help you be able to understand your mortgage. Now this is something I came across years ago and I actually showed someone this formula and they actually started paying down their mortgage. But what I'm here is to show you how the schedule works in terms of your principal and your interest and why you should probably not refinance if you can avoid it. So I'm gonna use some examples, some more realistic examples for people who are probably new homeowners so you can really actually understand the numbers and the numbers can change depending on a person, depending on the interest, but you'll get the gist of what this looks like for you. And you can also go online and pull up a calculator or ask your bank to give you the schedule for um, your repayment towards the loan so you have a better understanding of what is going towards your mortgage um, repayments so you can be more empowered and more in control of your money. And then that information you can now start putting extra on your loan and be able to pay off your loan even sooner, okay? So I'm gonna start with a loan that's about $300,000, okay? So we have someone paying $300,000. OK, and that's what they're 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 paying for their house, the house value. So, so let's just say in 2020, this is how much they pay for their house, three hundred thousand dollars. And their mortgage interest is about five percent. This is what I'm going to aim for. Now, we know that mortgage interest fluctuates. Back years ago, it was about 2.5%. I want to say that was probably like 2015, 2016. Then around, I think, COVID, it went up to 5%, went as high as probably 7%, depending on your bank, depending on your credit. There's a lot of factors, but we're going to use 5% for this example to help you understand how this is going to look like, okay? So you will pay back your loan typically in 30 years. And that's 12 months a year so that you have 360 payments to make back to your bank, okay? And for a loan that is $300,000, okay, this might be a shocker, but I'm going to say it to you. You're going to end up spending about $280,000 worth of interest towards your bank, okay? So let's just say on a 5%. You're going to spend 279 and let's say 767. So at the end of 30 years, you're going to pay 579.767. Okay, that's going to be your final amount 30 years later. Now, as you know, in 30 years, your house is probably going to worth much more than that. Due to inflation, things happening, there's a reason why, um, you know, houses go up, the market goes up. But again, this is just to educate you on what those numbers look like. Now I know you're like, 600000 yes, you're going to pay back the bank X amount of money, this X amount of money, which is going to vary towards the person. Again, there's a lot of factors that go into that. But at the end of the 30 years, you would have paid close to $600,000 towards the house that you're in. You might get lucky and live in a great neighborhood and that great neighborhood you might actually, your house might be worth a million dollars. So you didn't do too bad with 5% over a 30 year period. But there's some things I want you guys to know more than not to help you again be more educated, okay? So we're gonna now go back to the $300,000 you paid for your house. OK, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down what that looks like in terms of your monthly payment. I'm going to take some examples to be able to show you where you start versus where you're going to end. OK, so on a loan that is the three hundred thousand dollars, your principal um, is going to be about. Three hundred and sixty dollars, roughly. OK, and then your interest is going to be. Yes, that I wrote $1,200. So technically, you're going to be paying about $1,600 a month. 
Many people hear the 1600 and they don't really pay attention to the fact that what's going towards interest versus what's going towards their principal. Okay, so we're going to do this. This is going to be what you're going to pay. Um, sorry, this is actually 10. I saw the 50 and wrote 50, but this is 10. Okay, so this is your monthly payment. And this is your monthly payment for month one. Okay, so when you first, sorry, this is going to be your monthly payment every month, but this is how much it's going to go towards your interest in month one. All right, y'all, hold on. Okay, in interest, okay? So know that in 10 years, this number is going to change. In 20 years, this number is going to change. In 30 years, this number is going to significantly change. So if you go back to my video where I showed and talked to you guys about your, your loan and it has your escrow and it has your, um, your, your escrow makes up your home insurance and your taxes, okay? So in that video, I broke that down. Now, this is only talking about principal and insurance. You also have to factor in your escrow. Now, some people have an escrow because their loan requires them to pay an escrow because with the bank want to make sure that your, your home insurance, your home is insured and that you're actually paying your taxes because there are people who default on their taxes and their hazard insurance. So they're putting it in the escrow to guarantee that that house will be insured and their property taxes is paid to the city and there'll be no issue. So they're gonna take care of that for you. So just remember what I'm showing you does not include your escrow. I talked about the escrow in the other video about the mortgage, okay? So this is again, your first payment. So let's just say you started paying this January 1st, 2020, don't forget, in 2020, you bought a house worth $300,000 and you got a loan for 5% interest rate from your mortgage company or your bank, okay? So now you see what it looks like. Now, don't forget, you were paying $1,200 towards your interest on your first payment. So now we're gonna jump to, we are in 2024. So let's just say um, October, 2024. So now October 2024, okay? So I'm bringing you current state because I wanna show you the shift in your mortgage, okay? So now you're going to pay $454 towards your principal. Okay, so I'm just gonna... Okay. And then you're going to pay, so your October, you're paying about $460. Now you're going to pay $1,153. Don't forget your mortgage is still $1610, okay? So now you have less money going towards your interest. Now it's very important that you understand that the longer you keep your loan, the more that over time it's going to shift to where you're going to be started putting more money into your principal. It won't be that much in the first five years or the first 10 years. About the halfway mark is where it really starts to make a shift because the bank want their money on the front end. Because let's just say you sell your house within the 10, 15 year mark. Most people stay in their first homes, let's just say in the first eight years or 10 years, okay? Some are five years. But with that said, the banks are going to make sure that they're going to get that interest on the front end. So it's not a equal balance between your principal and your interest, you know, from day one all the way to 30 years. No, you pay a very small amount of your towards your principal for the first 10 to 15 years. And then that's when it starts to shift where you start putting more towards your principal and less towards your interest because the bank now have made the bulk of that money. Okay, so let's just say your loan technically when you are, you know, having a 30 year loan, you're technically not going to finish that loan until to, um, 20. 
49. Okay, that's when we started 2020. 2049 is going to be when you're going to end the 360 payments. Okay, so let's go to let's say we're 2024. We'll go to 2034. Okay. Okay, so 2034. Okay, that's the year. We're going to jump ahead because I want you to see something, okay? So in that time frame, you're now going to be paying $787 towards your principal. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but that's the way it works, right? But slowly you're shifting to be able to pay more towards your principal. Now you're going to pay about 819 and it's 50 cents. I haven't been, been, you know, doing that part. But that's now going to be where you're getting a little closer to the halfway mark, okay? So again, this is your principal and this is your interest, okay? So it's really good for someone who is going into a house or have a house to really understand these numbers because you may not realize that you can put more money towards your principal on the front end or anytime you choose, whether that's $100 a month or $10,000 at one time or 1,000 every other month, however it is. Let's just say you get your income tax. You can put your income tax on your principal, okay? If you get a bonus, put it on your principal. Do it. Do something that's going to actually help you in the long run, right? I really like to advocate for people spending their money wisely, building wealth so they can build generational wealth and be able to be that person who's breaking, you know, the 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 myths, the money myths, and the money philosophies that people have that was tying them down to being broken and feeling broke. Okay, so I do want you all to understand this because. It's going to be so important for you to really understand these numbers because it's going to help you become more um, in control of where your money's going, okay? And I am really thrilled to be able to give you this information because it's going to help someone make smarter decisions, okay? So now we're going to jump to the end of your, towards the end of your loan, okay? So in 20... 48 okay close to the end of you you have about a little bit more than 12 months left okay so we're going to go to december 2048 you're now going to be paying substantially more you're going to be paying 15 25 towards your principal what what a big jump but you're pretty much at the end of your loan so they can now throw the bulk of your money on the principal because they collected all of it, okay? Don't forget, you're going to be paying $280,000 worth of just interest on a $300,000 month loan. A lot of people don't think about that. They really think, people truly believe that when they get a loan for $300,000, that's all they're paying back. They don't pay attention to what that 5% mean. They don't look at the numbers. I want you guys to become very educated and, and gain control by understanding the numbers. Don't just believe and take someone's word for it. Go and do the calculations yourself. You truly can just pull up a mortgage calculator online and be able to download something, put in the numbers for your house, put change the date to when you bought your house, and then you'll start to really understand that it's not you're not you didn't pay three hundred thousand dollars for your house. You're going to pay close to six hundred thousand. It's going to pretty much double, okay? Because that five percent on three hundred thousand dollars over. 30 years is a lot of money, but again, the banks are going to get their money up front, okay? So going back to the loan, you're going to pay $84.74 towards interest. You see how that shift? And your mortgage amount is still the 1610. This does not change, okay? What's going to change is how they're going to receive the interest and what's going to go towards your principal. So I want you guys to really understand this, which is why I try to advocate for people to understand the numbers because 
You got to put your math wits on regardless if you, under, if you like math or not, because being analytical, right, in the space of really understanding the numbers allow you to really take control of your money in ways that you have never done before. And if it's something that you don't understand, you know, pop a question into the comments. I'll be happy to do a video on it to help educate you so you can be more empowered and to be able to build wealth. But I want you to understand the breakdown of the mortgage loan because a lot of people have this concept that they paid a certain amount for their house and they forgot about what they got to pay back to the, the bank or the mortgage company. Okay. And that's just the way it works. Okay. You're not going to um, acquire any house without having to pay back someone giving you money to be able to own a house up front. Like they're going to get their money and you better believe they're going to get their money on the front end. I really need you guys to understand that. Right. So that is why I try my best to um, teach you guys about not refinancing unless it's necessary because what happens is now you saw the shift from day one to you know to like the four year span and then you saw it you know years later and then you see it saw it towards the end so if you refinance 10 years into your loan or even five years into your loan you're resetting how much that bank is get the bank is getting especially if you do it with the same bank that means they're getting money twice two times from you right like you're getting a lower mortgage but what they're not telling you is that you are restarting your mortgage payment over which means that you are closer to the finish line now you're having to start over and with you having to start over, you're actually going to be giving them more money again on the front end. And this is what they don't tell you. So I want to be able to empower you all to know that there's a reason why you have to be savvy with your money. You have to be educated when it comes to numbers. You have to be able to know what is at the core of what you're paying out. This, ha this is about you know, not just your mortgage debt, but about your car loan, your credit cards. Credit cards are charging people close to 40% on interest, okay? And that means that if you think you got something on sale, you really didn't because if you don't pay off that amount in that month or when it's the next due date, that means that you have now increase what you thought you got a sale on and it's no longer on sale okay you probably will end up paying more money for it in the long run when you don't pay it off and that is the sad truth but at least you know so don't worry about what you didn't do what are you going to do now okay and I was so excited that someone reached out to me about the mortgage and they didn't live in the United States, but I didn't realize that the principles that um, God is having to teach you all actually help people worldwide. So that was so exciting. So again, drop something in the comments. Don't be afraid to send me a, a DM on social media, a question so I can create content for you because I truly want you all to when I want you all to understand that I call you the well sharer, not because that's my business name, you know, as a tagline, I say to you because you really have the ability to be that one to break generational um, debt. Okay. To break the cycle of generational debt. You really have the power to be able to stand at authority of the knowledge that I'm sharing with you and the wisdom that God has given you for you to be able to do better with your money. I can guarantee you God is telling you to do better. So I'm God is using me as a vessel to empower you with the knowledge that you need to be able to have more. OK, there's abundant of everything resources, you know, money, whatever it is, it's all abundantly available. OK. And with you knowing this, then you can start to see abundance in your life and move away from the theories of lack. Lack is what keeps people behind and broken and feeling broke and feeling heartache and despair and frustration, depression. And I want to be able to say, you don't need to feel that no more. Let that go because now you're getting information that's going to help you be able to obtain wealth through the knowledge and the wisdom, the clarity and understanding that God is bringing to you. So I pray that this video will serve you in more ways than you really even understand. And I pray that you'll be able to really connect the dots on everything else. So do not forget 
what I taught was just principal and interest. There's more that is included as you are a homeowner or if you're looking to be a homeowner. You have your property taxes that I said in the last, what I mentioned in the last video, your home insurance, and some people live in neighborhoods where they actually have a HOA fee. If you don't know what that is, if you're new to that term, it is you paying a set amount of money, a fixed amount of money every single year towards your homeowners association for things like a tennis court, pool, clubhouse, a playground, you know, a lake. It, the amenities vary by neighborhood, but just know for those who are new in um, owning, owning a house or wanting to own a house, know that it's more than meets the eye in becoming a homeowner. I'm going to create some content that will be able to show you all the things you need to consider in your budget so you are not struggling and being uh, someone who is owning a home and you are not financially free because you are now burdened by all the things that you didn't know that came with a house. There's a lot that comes with a house. There's a lot of maintenance. There's a lot of things that you have to keep up with. There's a lot of things on, you know, on the outside and the inside, and there's really important for you all to save and have money set aside for those emergency in not to say everything's an emergency but you know you never know when your heat's going to go out or your ac is going to go out so you know where you live and you know what you're spending on what you have is very important so i'm going to point you all to my other video which is about everything you need to budget for you to understand how to become more in control of your money so you can build wealth and share wealth with others all right so you guys have a great one i will speak to you soon and i pray that you all will do extremely well with your money please i pray that you will be a great steward of the money that god has given you all right bye